capitalism. So, so I, I like Bitcoin even more now than I did then. I think we're in the first inning of Bitcoin, uh, and then it's got a long way to go. All right, legendary investor Paul Tudor Jones over on CNBC talking about how he is as bullish as he has ever been on Bitcoin, telling millions of people watching this. We are going to take a look at what he had to say about Bitcoin. Also, we are going to talk about the markets. Bitcoin is currently pushing towards $13,000. Are we going to be able to break this massive bullish upside if we actually manage to do that? And we got something else. We got this guy. So this is actually Brad Sherman saying that 46% of all Bitcoin transactions are for illegal activities. So I was paraphrasing right here, but this sounds completely ridiculous to me. We're going to take a look at that as well. So we start right now. Okay, guys, welcome back. My name is Cristiano, and today we got breaking news. Paul Tudor Jones right now over on CNBC talking about Bitcoin, you know, I love when some, you know, prominent figures goes mainstream and talks about Bitcoin because with all due respect to YouTubers and Twitter people, the only thing that is going to bring that massive amount of money is for people like Paul Tudor Jones who are already established to come out and actually bring those people in by providing legitimacy to Bitcoin. So first off, let's talk about why he actually got into Bitcoin to begin with. He thinks that Bitcoin is the best bet against inflation. So I'm not going to put the words in his mouth. Let's hear it. Talk to you. I don't know if it was the last time we talked to you, but but it, back in May, uh, you had uh, told us that you were buying about 2% or putting 2% two, two of your assets into Bitcoin, uh, which has been uh, on a wild ride upward, uh, especially even in the past 48 hours, as PayPal has announced that it's going to allow Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh, onto its platform. Um, what do you do? Are you selling any right now? Are you buying even more? What's the what's the thought? Well, Bitcoin. R remember, the reason that uh, I like Bitcoin and wrote about it to my investors was because back in March and April, it became really apparent, given the monetary policy that was being pursued by the Fed, the incredible quantitative easing that they were doing and other central banks were doing, that we were in an unprecedented time. And that um, given the fact that we were going to try to monetize many of the negative issues that COVID brought, that one had to begin to think about how you defend yourself against inflation with M2 now growing at a 25% annual rate. So, which we haven't seen in 80 years, by the way. The last time we saw that inflation was three, four, five percent. Um, so, uh, the reason I recommended Bitcoin is because it was one of a menu of inflation trades, like gold, like tips break evens, like copper, like GSCI, uh, like being long the yield curve. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that Bitcoin was going to be the best of the inflation trades, the defensive trades that you would take, because uh, when you looked at the overall market caps of all the rest of them and you looked at all the characteristics, Bitcoin had the advantage of, of being, had a very small coterie of people who were investing in it. It was portable, it was liquid, had a variety of characteristics that made it a great inflation hedge. The one thing it didn't have is it didn't have integrity and long-term staying power, which every day that goes by, of course, it, it gains on that. It gains on credibility and, and integrity. Every day, it gets more integrity. It gets more credibility. So I like that. If you like those words by Paul Tudor Jones, make sure to like the video right now. If you're getting value out of this video, you can subscribe. I do provide you with several, mostly two videos a day actually, staying up to date with everything and providing everything to you so that you also are up to date with everything that's going on in these markets. Now, next up, I wanna talk about comparing Bitcoin to getting into Google, Amazon, or Apple early. Like Everyone is comparing Bitcoin to Apple and getting in early on these companies. The thing is, I think that many people get it wrong because it is not about getting in early in some company that is going to do well. When we say that we are comparing Bitcoin to getting in early on Google, Facebook or Amazon, we talk about getting into something that is going to revolutionize the world. Like 
Google have revolutionized tech, like Facebook have revolutionized tech and Amazon have revolutionized e-commerce. I mean, that is what we are talking about. And Bitcoin is going to revolutionize the way that we transact money, the whole monetary system. And so that is what we talk about when we talk about getting in early. So let's hear it from Paul Tudor Jones in respect to that. But what I what I didn't appreciate and now I now I know what it must feel like. Uh, to be a tech investor. Remember, I don't really trade individual stocks. I'm just a macro trader. But uh, Bitcoin has a lot of the characteristics of being an early investor in a tech company. And I didn't realize it until uh, after, uh, unfortunately, I came on your show and got besieged by God knows how many different people on Bitcoin. Uh, and again, I've I've got small single digit investment in Bitcoin. That's it. I'm not a Bitcoin flag bearer. But what I learned right. was and what I was so pr- surprised by is that Bitcoin has this enormous contingent of really, really smart and sophisticated people who believe in it. Uh, and, it's, and, and now when I think of the menu of, of the inflation hedges, uh, the, the thing that Bitcoin has, again, it's like investing with Steve Jobs and Apple or investing in Google early. You've got this group of, and it's by the way, crowdsourced all over the world that are dedicated to seeing Bitcoin succeed in it becoming a commonplace store of value and transactional to boot uh, at, at, a, at a very basic level. And so I've never had an inflation hedge where you have a kicker that you also have great intellectual capital behind it. So that makes me uh, even more constructive on it. So next up, and this is probably one of the most important parts of this video, is when it explains that Bitcoin is different because you can be short the market a lot. And in many cases, you're going to make money if that actually happens. But if that happens in the markets, it also has the side effect of the whole world going down pretty much with all the suffering and stuff going on like hyperinflation. How many people are going to suffer if you see hyperinflation? So you can bet on these different things, but Bitcoin to him is also a peaceful way out of this. You opt into a different system and that can actually just change the world without us having these massive negative consequences as well. So let's hear it from him. If you think about it, if you're long two thirties, right, you're effectively short the bond market. That's your inflation hedge. You're really betting on the fallacy of mankind rather than uh, right. its ingenuity and entrepreneurialism. So so I, I like Bitcoin even more now than I did then. I think we're in the first inning of Bitcoin uh, and then it's got a long way to go. Yes, I like that. Paul Tudor Jones, as bullish as he has ever been on Bitcoin. Now, are you going to go against Paul Tudor Jones, the American billionaire and hedge fund manager? Well, guess what? This guy is actually going against him, saying that Bitcoin should be banned and 46% of all transactions are for illegal activities. Now, I want to get someone to verify it because it just sounds completely ridiculous to me. And if it is not the case, which I am absolutely sure, I don't think this is the case at all. I mean, he's just spreading lies. I mean, someone should, I don't know. I don't even know what to say, guys. But some people in the comments are saying that he is pays lobbyist for, you know, payment processors and banks and whatever. That explains it. But we really need to not spread these things on mainstream media. But I am going to play this for you just to, I guess everyone can just understand how big of a fool this guy is. We should be prohibiting cryptocurrencies. They disempower the federal government. And there is an anarchist strain, a libertarian strain, that says every time the federal government is disempowered, Americans should be happier. The, it's funny, I've got Republican colleagues who want America to be strong and the U.S. government to be weak. And that doesn't actually work. So are you good, saying you think cryptocurrency work. should be illegal? Absolutely, I've advocated that for a long time. All right, and, so- and, and, th- and, and think of it, the purpose of cryptocurrency 
It serves no function unless somebody's engaged in nefarious transactions. That's why 46% of the Bitcoin transactions are for people who are doing things illegal under U.S. law, according to an academic peer-reviewed study. That's uh, whether they're evading sanctions, evading tax laws, or dealing drugs. So uh, we already know, and Bitcoin is, 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 a t is, is a small baby here. You can't buy a pack of gum for a Bitcoin. It has to have an off-ramp that you can then convert it into a sovereign currency. Uh, this proposal solves that problem and will allow drug dealers to go seamlessly from drug deals to money they can spend on luxuries. This is a chance to liberate those who hate federal laws, whether it be anti-drug laws or anti-drug traf uh, uh, human trafficking laws, uh, tax laws or our sanctions regime. This is a chance for them to get around uh, the most effective controls that we have. And that's why it's popular. Wow, listen to that. It just, it's completely absurd to me. And 46% of all Bitcoin transactions, again, I don't know how he's calculating this. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say, guys. Well, what I can say is that Bitcoin is about to break 13,000. And, you know, we only got air above this. We only got air going to the monthly. Let's do this real quick because why not? I mean, look at this. This is, this is what we are watching, okay? So, I mean, this is not straight at all, but you get the point. I mean, above this, just straight air up to 20,000. Now, obviously we can have pullbacks. We are going to have pullbacks, but I'm just saying there's not much resistance above this. So keep that in mind, guys. Now I want to talk about Bitcoin going parabolic within, <laughs> within the next couple of weeks, perhaps. So let's talk about it. The video is popping up in the middle of this video right now, and I will see you there.